I think you all know why we're here right now. I talked about the Kevin Durant sweepstakes a little bit. Basically, I concluded with, I don't think anything's going to happen. There was a lot of heat a few weeks ago. It seemed like it was any second. We were all refreshing our phones like, it's going to happen. The watch bomb's going to drop. Nope. Nothing. And that all started with the Kyrie saga. Let's just take a trip down memory lane for a second. Y'all remember the Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett trade? This was one of the biggest finesses, biggest fleecings in recent years in the basketball world. And it's a trade that is still relevant today because it has built the foundation for this team. I mean, it seems like Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, Al Horford, Brad Stevens, and one role or another, and the Boston Celtics have been competing for an NBA championship for a while. I mean, even if they weren't a favorite, even if they weren't necessarily a contender, they were right there, right below. They were a second round playoff team. Even when they had Isaiah Thomas got to the conference finals, this foundation has been there and it has been growing. And Danny Ainge didn't hoard all these picks for no reason. He is a casualty of this Boston Celtics rebuild. Even if you, if you really want to call it that, I guess you can because they were rebuilding at a point when they made that trade that was the start of the rebuild. It didn't take long for them to build up that draft capital and possess a level of assets that everybody wanted to trade a star for. I mean, Danny Ainge was so hell-bent on keeping picks. He didn't want Jimmy Butler. He didn't want Anthony Davis. He didn't want Paul George. Obviously, he's not there anymore. But I think the same ideologies that he operated off of are still present with Brad Stevens. Like, Kevin Durant is available. None of the guys I just named are Kevin Durant. He is old. He's like 34, right? He is missing games pretty consistently each year. He is an incredibly sensitive athlete, and there is a chance that you could acquire him, and he wants to leave your team in a year. Man, it would be another hilarious case of if you can't beat him, join him. <laughs> the Boston Celtics are essentially pulling a Kevin Durant because going into next season, I look at their team as it is currently comprised, and I'm thinking, these guys have a shot. I mean, you were in the finals, and you have your whole team coming back, and then you're gonna add Malcolm Brogdon for nothing? Didn't they add someone else too, Danilo Gallinari? I mean, these are bench pieces. These are guys that could play 20 minutes, especially Malcolm Brogdon in a playoff series. He addresses a need, addresses a concern as another ball handler, another potential facilitator, and a guy that can shoot the ball. Yeah, he's gonna miss games, but he makes their team better. They had a championship level team. They could have won the NBA Finals. They were certainly good enough to do it this year. Yeah, you could say if the Bucks had Chris Middleton, they would have won. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I mean, if a lot of things, there's a lot of what ifs. You could do the what if game forever. It surely wasn't the weakest road to the NBA Finals we've ever seen. It seems like every time anybody wins a championship, we can say, oh, but what if, yeah, that's how it works. You got to get a little bit lucky, but you have to have the pieces to contend, to be in a position to contend. If you get Kevin Durant, you're going to give up something that helped make this team what it is. I think the Celtics, despite a loss in the NBA Finals, they were still on a stage they had never been at before. Yeah, the clock is ticking. Damn, you guys have been in the conference finals so many times and just never made it to the finals. They finally broke through. They finally broke through. I mean, they certainly thought they were going to win the NBA Finals, but right now they have a team that can win the NBA Finals. I compared to Kevin Durant and the Golden State Warriors back in the day because that was some bullshit what he did, but the Warriors basically said, you know what? 73 and 9, we're not good enough. We need Kevin Durant. As a general manager, it is your job. You are being paid millions of dollars to make your team better, give your team a better chance at winning a ring. They couldn't beat the Cleveland Cavaliers without Kevin Durant that year. They choked a 3-1 lead. So guess what? They made it so the Cavaliers couldn't beat them. And no one could. Now here's the thing that I want to talk to the Boston Celtics about is that why is it that the package is just Jalen Brown? I mean, I assume that Boston Celtics think that we would never give up Jason Tatum for Kevin Durant. Why? Jason Tatum's not a superstar player. If he was, they wouldn't have gone to seven with Miami like that. If he was, he wouldn't have gotten bitched by Andrew Wiggins like that. If he was, he wouldn't have gotten outplayed by Jalen Brown in the last two rounds of the NBA playoffs. I'm not saying he isn't the best player on the team. I'm just saying he's not a superstar yet. Now, the reason why the Celtics wouldn't want to give him up is because they believe that he can get even better. And he has shown that each season, he does get better. You're continuing to hold on his stock. And that's fine. You have built the foundation for this team in a lot of ways behind Marcus Smart. Now, let's just give a little bit of context here because this is just a lot of ranting, but basically the Celtics offered Jalen Brown and Derek White and a pick or picks. Not clear on exactly what the pick or picks were, but I know they offered Jalen Brown and Derek White. 
Celtics basically said, it's going to have to be smart instead of Derek White. You can give away him and Jalen Brown for Kevin Durant. Yeah, you could do that. Does that even make you better? You do get the guy. You do get the top five guy that you, that you want, that you need. It is incredibly important to have a guy of that stature, a superstar. You get the superstar. Jason Tatum can be your number two, and that's an amazing one-two punch. That's as good as any one-two punch in the NBA. But you need a team around that. Who's your third guy? They're, they have a really great defensive team. But if you get rid of Marcus Smart, who's your first perimeter defender? Who's your point of attack guy that you're going to put against James Harden, against Steph Curry, against Kyrie Irving? Who is taking that challenge? Derek White? You're going to start Derek White? You're going to give? You're going to throw him on James Harden all game? I don't think that's enough because you need to build your team in a way that is so well-rounded on both ends. Kevin Durant and Jason Tatum, elite perimeter scoring players, playing off of each other, they would probably be pretty good. Do you have a guy to get them the ball? Malcolm Brogdon can't play a full season. And even if he could, is he the guy? Is he the setup guy? Is he the pure point guard that you've been looking for? I know a lot of people are saying Marcus Smart is just not the pure point guard that the Celtics need. And while Malcolm Brogdon, he might help address that, is he ready for a starting role and to play 36 minutes a game and to be a pure point guard and to be the head of the snake for a team like that? You will have your immaculate interior defense of Robert Williams, Al Horford, that is still intact but I just don't think that you can get rid of two of your three main guys. Marcus Smart is not a role player. This guy is one of the toughest players I've ever seen. He will play through any injury that he has. He will give it his all. He will inspire his team. He is the definition of grit, grind, having heart on the basketball court. And I don't think that you make your team better by getting rid of him. I, don't th I wouldn't trade him and Jalen Brown for Kevin Durant if I'm the Boston Celtics. Here's my proposition. You want Kevin Durant? Trade Jason Tatum for him. I don't believe that there is such a gap between Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. I do not believe their value is so far apart. I know Tatum's a little bit younger, but Jalen Brown is still a young guy with room to improve that continues to get better. That was their best player during the NBA Finals. And I do believe he has some of the intangibles that Jason Tatum lacks that I think his value is damn near just as much. But his value is not nearly as high as Jason Tatum's in the eyes of so many people around the league and GMs. Like, the Celtics don't even want to offer Jason Tatum. The Nets would love Jason Tatum. The Nets might get, might take Jason Tatum for Kevin Durant straight up. Maybe not. But that's, he's about 10 years younger. You get a whole career of Jason Tatum. How long do we even have Kevin Durant for? I mean, Jason Tatum, a lot of people believe that he can ascend into that true superstar. He's not there yet. But the reason he's so valuable is because they believe he can ascend to that level. How many years do the Celtics really have to contend for this championship? How long is their championship window? If you really want Kevin Durant that bad, if you really want that guy that's going to take you to the next level, you shouldn't give up two of your main guys to get him. You shouldn't give up your entire backcourt. That's not just easily replaceable. The way the Celtics play is so strongly predicated on Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown being physical impact players in that backcourt. That's two guys you have to strongly account for on both ends. I don't think the Boston Celtics would be setting themselves up for success if they're going to trade Marcus Smart. I don't think they're going to do it. I don't think they would do it. I think they know what's best for them. But if you really want Kevin Durant, you should at least entertain the idea. Replace Tatum with Kevin Durant? That team should win. That's a better team. You were improving your team for a few years. However long Kevin Durant has. But Kevin Durant, is he would not have as much pressure on him to create for himself on that team. And he could play pretty much the role Jason Tatum was playing, but better because he is clearly the superior player. Clearly would not disappear if he had Andrew Wiggins guarding him in the finals. If you really want Kevin Durant, you know what's best for you. The Nets have your entire, you have your future set up, you have your guy. And the Celtics, you have a superstar, a star, high level role players. You, your chemistry probably doesn't change. This doesn't change how your team looks very much at all. I mean, you don't have to restructure anything. You don't have to relearn how to play the game, which I think is very easy to make the switch. So, you know, if I was playing my GM, my league on 2K, you already know what I would do. Don't listen to me, though.